It's the first time we've done it in five or six years. We had all this time in between record companies and a lot of things happened with the band. We were touring this whole time, but we haven't really recorded. So uh, we decided to do an album. We started writing, Ricky and myself, and Johnny got with a lot of other Nashville songwriters. And John Five from LA is a great guitar player, a great friend of ours, and Bob Marlette helped us write some. And, Jeffrey Steele and a lot of people, uh, Trey Bruce and, geez, I, uh, there were so many I can't remember them all right off. Tam ha Ham Hambridge, Hambridge. Tom Hambridge. You gosh. And um, anyway, we wrote some songs, and and the song that we might show you today is still unbroken. We wrote with Huey Thomason, who's in with us so longer. God bless him, and uh, we lost him during this whole process, and. Ian Evans, our bass player, and Billy Powell, and it was tough. And they were on uh, some songs, and they were in spirit in this album, and so we wanted to finish it for them, as well as ourselves and fans. So we did that, and we worked real hard, and Sparky here is our new guitar player, and he's been with us a few years, and he jumped in there and just fit in like a glove, so. We did it and we had a lot of fun doing it with John Five and Bob Marlette and some Nashville pickers here and there. Not We didn't use too many people other than us, you know. And then we just put it down. We're real proud of it. And Ricky, I'll let him take over. Actually, well, what I find is really interesting about this song that we're, you know, gonna show you, Still Unbroken. Um, first of all, we had, you know, Gary came to us and um, said, I found this tape. And he says, you got to hear this song that I found on there. He says, it's got Huey on there with us, you know. And we listened to it. And I think, uh, by all my recollection, recollection of it, I think that the song was um, basically written after, shortly after not too long Leon passed. Uh, because we, you know, were going through a bit of a down period about that, you know. And uh, we got together to start writing again. And that was a song that basically that you could hear Huey talking in there along with the other three of us, Johnny, Gary, and myself. And you could hear us all having a conversation and stuff, you know. And one of the funniest things about the four of us writing together is on a steady basis, Huey uh, would bring his guitar in and, and he would set all of his gadgets up and plug them all up. And at some point, never failed, at some point he would get a feedback loop mm -hmm. Through all of his stuff, and he'd go. The chords would go bad. And yeah. He would he would do it all the time. We could count on it, which would lighten everything up. You know, we'd crack up. You we'd know, if everything got real out, serious. Yeah. You know, but um, the song really took on a really incredible vibe about it once we got in the studio with Bob Marlette. and Bob actually we got to know through John Five and. Uh, he actually, Bob did the demos on quite a few songs before we got together with him and started recording. And I think really what he said to me was uh, at the time, he said, I've always wanted to record Leonard Skinner and try getting what that essence of Leonard Skinner was then and bringing it what it is now and merging the two together. And for all the people I've talked to so far in the press and stuff, they think that he did exactly that. He captured, you know, the old spirit and the new spirit of it all, merged it together, and that's what's on the record, you know? Actually, it's just an E string dropped down to a D, and, and that's basically it. Why well, we do that sometimes, yeah. And when we're on a long tour, and we, but you got to just adjust the keyboards to it, so it's hard. Yeah, we're tuned down a half step already. Yeah, we're tuned down a half step because it saves on the vocals, like Gary says. But it gives it that, that real, you know, that underlying punch, you know, that underlying ballsiness to it, you know. But in the studio, we didn't do it to all the songs no. because of keyboard. So you had to tune to that or it was a mess, you know. You had to get the whole piano tuned for one track, so. One, two, three.
So basically the way I play it is, I'm playing it without hitting the, the drop D, of course. I'm playing it on the... Because the inversion right there, it gives you the fifths, right? So it's got it all the way covered. So when they're playing the way they play it, it's a wide-bodied sound. So it's... And then on the verses and stuff, we come down. Everything pedaling on a D. So. Then Sparky plays off of this. And he plays off of this. The intro is just uh, follow their chords, yep. which is. I just do the slide as goes with the melody, yep. which is. Different guitars. 
you can hear it right here, you know, yeah. obviously we got the, I'm a single coil sound versus mm -hmm. the humbuckers and Gary with the slide and Ricky with the, you know, the beefy sound. So with, uh, when I was recording, when we were doing with Bob Marlett, my part was going to have to be, you know, I, I, could, I was helping out with all that. I really needed to have something more, you know, on top to even out the, you know, the sound of the, of the record. So I put a little uh, arpeggio in there. Fred is a ten fret. I'm playing uh, an A and an F on the third mm -hmm. and second string, and an open E and string to James. Called a jingle string. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, string. it's jingle string. Which sounds kind of funny by itself, but you want to do that real quick. So yeah. it's uh, it three, good. four. I remember the, the way we wrote Freebird and, and stuff. Alan had these chords. Alan Collins had these chords for a long time, and they changed a lot, you know, and the, the, the chords for Freebird. And we didn't really write anything to that for a while, and Ronnie thought there was too many chord changes. But except for one day after a while, you know, of Alan playing these chords at rehearsal, Ronnie started thinking and writing, you could see him writing and just lay on the couch saying, play that again, play that again. He had to play it about 10 times or 20 times or 30, you know, and then he'd come up with the lyrics and he wrote them real quick and just kind of came out of it. And he wrote them real quick like that and, um, and we started playing it. It was just a slow song, a pretty love song, really about a guy leaving this girl always going on the road and what she remember and that was kind of what it was about to me and us at the time and then uh we played these clubs and places all over florida and and when we played the comic book club uh we went into the jam at the end so ronnie could rest his vocals really and that's how it got so long. We used to just do a few bars of it, let Alan play, and we'd fade it out. And then it got longer and longer and longer and longer until <laughs> till, till it turned out to be what it is. And then everybody liked it and liked us playing that, and they got off on Alan's guitar solo. And people in clubs just say, y'all play that real long one, Fire Fire, that we can dance to. <laughs> Fire we can dance to there, though, so they like that. You know? <laughs> and we had all kinds of experiences with it, and, and it turned out to be what it is. And, uh, and, and then we started, Ronnie started dedicating it to Dwayne Allman passed away and got in the motorcycle wreck. And so we had just written it, and it wasn't out on record yet, but at shows we would dedicate that to him as being a free bird now. So people thought we wrote it about him, you know, they didn't know the story. And, and uh, we just dedicated to it for a long time. And then after the plane crashed, before we did the tribute tour and got back together and started doing all the, the stuff, we did it instrumentally with just Ronnie's hat on the mic, you know, and let the audience sing it. And they sang it real good, you know, but, but we knew that Ronnie was a writer and wanted to, his lyrics and work to be heard, so. I said, sing it, Johnny. Johnny, you sound just like him. Just do it. And people like that now, you know. And so that's what we do. And um, Ricky learned the lead, like at the end, like I said earlier, every note for note, that's, that's on Guitar Hero. And uh, <laughs> all the young guys coming up kind of use that as a basis, like Hendrix or, or uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan stuff. If you could play what they're doing, you're pretty good, you know, and they learn from that. And Sparky played everything Ed King played with Alan or Steve Gaines. And then I just played the rhythm and had the slide part. I was going to tell you about the slide part in this. It's two, I uh, used a G string and then I tuned the B string to a G. So there's, there's two. Set and 
draw a kind of sustaining sound. Then uh, in the old days, when we first started playing it, I had this guitar, I forget what kind it was, it wasn't a Les Paul, and um, it was just, I don't think it even had a name, it was just this electric guitar, it was white, and I play. I put a screwdriver, because I kept clinking, fretting out on the notes, so I put a screwdriver all the way up the neck to play free work, like a pedal steel or something. Right, right. And then after a while, I got to where I could play without the chord, but it sounded cool, so I just never quit. Right. And I still do it today with a chord now, not a screwdriver, because it screws the whole neck up in the frets. But that's the story on the slide part, you know, and just both those strings turn, uh, tune to a G, and the rest is history. It's so funny to watch people, you know, when you watch bands, club bands or something, play that song. I love, uh, my, my favorite thing is to watch a club band play it and listen to them try to do the slide part that they've never quite figured out exactly how he does it, you know, and it's amazing to me. And I have to sit there and give them the credit, of course, you know, you don't, they try, you know, and, and give them the credit, but it, it's amazing how many different versions oh, yeah. of, I've ever seen somebody try to do it when in reality, what he's doing is simplicity wins out all the time, you know? And it's just his signature thing is what's so cool about it. Yeah. I'll tell you something interesting about that. You know, Gary keeps mentioning the simplistic thing. It's simple, but let me tell you something. Yeah. There was a gig, this is a true story. Uh, Gary got sick, unfortunately. We were gonna have to do a gig mm -hmm. without him, which God forbid. And we, so we were, me and Ricky were like, well, oh, we were free. you know, well, then I'm gonna, <laughs> will I do this? So I tried this thing at home. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Lewis is sitting right here, our, his guitar tech. He sent me one of these things. Yeah. That just about ruined me. So <laughs> I can say simplistic, but let me tell no, you something. It, it, it's you just some, those you got me, exactly. The really cool thing, too, about it is what Alan is in the, in the song. He's actually, it's actually... <laughs> And that's, you know, that's what's really great about that because Alan had a way of pedaling each, yeah, pedal the nose. It's just like in, uh, uh -huh. you know what I mean? He pedaled the, he rolled the notes and it's, it's really cool. I've often said Southerners are the only ones that do that. They roll the note. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, that's what's so great about the, about the little, in, little inner workings of the tune, that coupled with what he does, you know, and, it just, and what Billy did, it just worked, man. It was just so, it was so cool, you know? Yeah, there's versions where there's no slide, it's just piano, and there's versions where it fades out at the end and there's not a long ending. The first, uh, we, you know, we always said we had a lot of balls back then for uh, a, gum, a gumption or whatever you call it for playing a song that long because singles are only two or three minutes at the right. most. Right. And, any, and five is lucky, you know, Light My Fire or something like that was five. And it's like, well, that's a long song. And Freebird was nine minutes. So they said, nobody will ever play that song. That song won't do nothing. You guys are crazy. So we said, we'll cut it or splice it how you want. We went on the road on tour, and we didn't even think about it. So it came out back in the 70s with all these different versions. And, and it, but then the, the real version always got played, you know, because it was rock radio, and they let it go. It was one of that song and Crossroads by The Cream and, and Whipping Post by or, uh, a couple of Almond Brothers songs, the only songs that were that long, you know. Everybody, get radio play. yeah, to get radio play. Well, we didn't care, but they did it anyway. It was pretty cool. And then the the publishing, you get played for two, paid for two songs because it's it's like two songs get played on the air. Yeah, 
So it's pretty cool. It's really interesting because um, when uh, Huey, you know, Huey at one point, he left the band, you know, and so Gary and I decided what we were going to do until we found the right person. We decided we were just going to do it with two guitars like the original band did. And boy, there were moments that, that in playing guitar with Gary and I, there were moments I had serious flashbacks. Because oh, yeah. I was a drummer, you know, at that time when the band was just two guitars, bass, drums, and Ronnie singing. And boy, there were some serious flashbacks I went through every night thinking about he and I playing, you know, just two guitars. And when it came to Freebird, it was like, baby, it's on. You know what I mean? I was like hell bent for leather playing the whole thing, you know, all every night. And it was so cool because we had, we didn't have the dual thing like Sparky and I, you know, went back to. Oh, and no. it, it was cool though, man. You're on your own out there, baby. So go for it, you know? It was great. It was great. Yeah, that was what was cool about this song. We could do, and even when we opened for The Who, we only did like three or four songs in Freebird. But Freebird always won the crowd over because nobody could play or was playing like, except for Clapton or somebody like that back then, you know. He was only like 18 when we did that song. So it was crazy, you know. But uh, God bless him. It started with Alan going... comes in with the piano right there. The piano comes in, you know, that was Billy's big moment, man, to me was the most incredible thing for him, you know, at that point, you know, because you give it all to him, buddy, and it was just like, here comes Babe Ruth to knock a home run, you know? That was just phenomenal. It's funny, people love to hear 
a good piano player anytime, you know, whether it's Liberace or Billy Powell or <laughs> Dr. John, you know, just piano is so cool and Billy really did it. It was fun to see our crowds, you know, they're all crazy rednecks and drinking beer and stuff, but when he played a solo or did it all alone, we, he used to come out and do a long solo before Freebird. And people, you'd see these guys just looking and just enjoying it because it was so good, you know, and it was just so different. Bless him. Like Sparky said, it's kind of hard unless you know <laughs> what you're doing, and it's crazy because when you pick the strings up, it's all out of tune and out of whack and screwed up, and you got to be a derelict to know how to do it. <laughs> but it's just, you know, you hit both strings together. You got to just use it as a G string, you know, I mean, both of them. So it makes that draw, I call it like a drawy sound that draws out. That's it, and then it just follows the chord. And it's, it's really simple, you know. Now, do you mute at all with this hand? I'll do it with this hand back right here, because this is already kind of muted because of that, so. Kind of a weird thing, but it's cool, you know. It's, it wasn't cool to me until the song got big and everybody liked it for so long. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> but, uh, it was just, it was hard to do and get ready because you had to retune and had to put that goofy wire up my guitar back in the old days to go, okay. Just getting all the sweating and going, all right. But it was the last <laughs> song, so we were ready, you know. I didn't have a spare guitar then, you only used one, so. I had to do it all while Ronnie was maybe talking to him, but he didn't like to talk to the crowd. So if you look at any of our old tapes of the live tapes, he just maybe said a word or two the whole show, you know. One, two, three. <laughs> section 
after you come in with those dual leads, and then, then you got the other section to it, right? Which is where the mirror ball drops down. It goes. and does uh, by, uh, you know, to there. And then the last section is, is what we call the bolero part, which it goes wow, wow. Well, the beginning of it, it is. It keeps holding on that, and then it goes up. Right? And then it does the thing where it goes. It does that, you know, that very first part of it. And then it does the, uh, then after you're doing all the riff up there, and then there's a. Then. And try doing that, I mean, that's a hard one. I have to, and what's cool is, if you ask me to play that right now without another band playing, I'd be like, oh God. It's weird, but when the band's playing, I can play it fine. But it's that's the lick. Right? Then it comes down on the Then it goes. Goes into that. That's where he joins me. Double at that. And that's where he joins me. Double. That's hard to do too tight. Double in it, note for note. Mm -hmm. Make you that on that. And you got that right. And uh, there's a few songs yeah. he always did doubles in.
Simple Man and uh, other song. We always play double because live that's cool. And then we always just rehearse a lot, so we thought it was normal. But everybody got a big kick out of playing it together or that we could do that like it's hard or something. Okay. So it's so funny because when he jumps in, we're both doing that. Right? Then we come. Then it goes into the next section, you know, and then what's after that, actually, the leads are pretty, uh, pretty simple after that, you know, to the point you just got to listen to the noting. We come down into the breakdown, we go. Now, there was a couple of times the band used to play this thing. Alan would play it a little bit different sometimes. So we, what we've kind of done is, is kind of incorporated a lot of everything he did. He played it one time, I heard it, I used to play it like this, I went. Then we played it. We play it like that. So he'd kind of, he kind of do some, you know, some changing of it, which is cool, you know. And uh, then we do the, after we did that, then it starts into the, right? Then. Then it goes. up on that where you do the wah ah da you know. Then back to the... <laughs> we kind of do a... Then it's kind of like a free-for-all from right after that, you know? What the hell was that, that? That's a three and thirds. Yeah. I'm a third. You know? <laughs> We're either doubling exactly, yep. or sometimes I'm an octave <laughs> difference, or right. a third. So it kind of moves around. Where do you do an octave? Uh, sometimes when he's doing that. It moves around in there, you know. There's, <laughs> we, we do it so much every night that we don't think about it that much. We just Not anymore, we don't. Yeah, it's pretty cool. One of the things that I think is really cool about it, over all of it, his thing in on the slide, and at the very end, we're... At It's like, <laughs> like a bolero. Yeah. That's what we call it. I don't know why. It was Spanish, I guess. <laughs> Pretty wild. It's hard to figure out. I could never do that. You know, it's all <laughs> crazy. And then you pull that thing out, I guess. Yeah, I do that and out. I pull that. Right you just can't hit that beast for Right, right. Cool. And, uh, in the uh, old days, it was hard because then I had to tune back up. It's like playing guys are playing that rhythm with like. Yeah, I was still tuning. Yeah.